All right, so I put up this kind of faux brick wall a couple years ago, and I shoot a lot of videos sitting on the couch. Um, the couch is right in front of me. I kind of have it pushed up right here. But since I've been making more videos lately in front of this wall, it's just bothering me more and more. What's bothering me? Well, this wall is so red, and there's so much red in my skin tones that every time I video something, trying to color it or correct it is just, it's a nightmare, at least for me. It's driving me crazy. So this weekend, we're gonna try to remedy that. Okay, so let me show you what I did when I first put this wall up. So what you're looking at here, well, you can't see all of it, but what you're seeing here is three brick panels all put together right here. This wall is exactly 12 feet, so I got lucky there. So I have three four foot wide brick panels all put together here. You can see one of the seams right here when I first put it up. Um, I tried to cover it the best I could. It's not perfect, but uh, you know, it works. When I first put this wall up a couple years ago, I went ahead and I put drywall spackling in between the uh, bricks here. I thought it helped break up the repetitive pattern of the bricks because you know they're, it's, it's fake bricks, so there's natural repeats in the pattern. So having that uh, drywall spackling in there helped just create different markings and cover up different things, kind of help break up your eyes a little bit when you're looking at it. But like I said, too much red. So first step, you can kind of see right here as I'm doing right here, look up here, I started, I got some more drywall spackling and I'll show you what I used here in a second. I got more drywall spackling and I actually covered the bricks. Not, not 100%, but enough to again, break up that red a little bit. So that's step one, I'm, I'm covering the whole wall in this drywall spackling. Same stuff that I used in the cracks here, but now I'm coming back through and actually intentionally putting it on the bricks. That's step one, and after I do that, then we're gonna try to whitewash over it as well. So I saw something online that did the same thing, and I liked I liked how it turned out, so we're gonna see how it looks for us. So here, let me back up and show you what it looks like. All right, so the, again, you can see, you know, the three brick panels all right and through here, and down here is what I haven't done yet, but up here is what I've already started doing with the drywall spackling, and uh, it's looking Pretty good. I think it's I think it's gonna do the trick, but you know, we'll know whenever we finish. This is the drywall spackling that I am using. I also used this to do in between the bricks a couple years ago, this same stuff. And then this is what I'm using for the bricks right now to cover them up. So I'll scrape some. And then we just come over here. Let's go to some place where there is oh this is sorry, this is super close up. And then just yeah, like that, you know, however much you want, and then just kind of go through the bricks and that's what I'm going to do, but it's hard to do one-handed, so... Uh... So there it is. Already took out a lot of the red, and then once we whitewash it, I think that'll... I think we'll give it a cool-looking vibe. But before we do the whitewashing, I'm going to go through with this little sanding sponge and sand in between the cracks of the brick. Um, Mainly because since this is a faux brick wall, there's not a ton of texture. There's just a little bit of that indentation between the bricks and the mortar that I put in there. So I want to sand in between there, in between those cracks to make sure that the bricks are still defined. So I got it quickly sanded in between those bricks there. Again, you can kind of just see some gray from the original faux brick behind it, which again, I think we're just gonna vary it whenever we cover the whole thing with the whitewash. So I keep saying the term whitewash, like we're gonna whitewash this wall, and we are, but I didn't actually buy whitewash paint because I just heard you can make it yourself just with some white paint and water. So uh, that's what we're gonna try to do, it's cheaper. And so I just got this um, Rust-Oleum like flat, Let's see if you can, just flat white. I didn't even get it colored anything because I just wanted it just white, so it's just flat white. So I'm gonna take this, open it up, pour it in here, mix it all together with some water. That's all it is, it's just a white paint and water. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. I think I've heard that 50-50 is good, like 50% paint, 50% water. I'm gonna go a little bit more conservative on the paint. So that's about how much paint's in there. Then I'm gonna fill it probably up to here-ish with water. I'll show you that here in a second though, just so you can see for sure. And here it is with the water. I have not stirred it up yet, but I think, again, this is, I'm just eyeballing all this. I think the paint was about right. Here you can kind of see the shadow where the water comes up right here. So, ish, 25 to, maybe it's more like 33% and 66%. I think that's more closely what I did. But it's about third paint. No, yeah, it's one third paint, two thirds water. And let's mix it up and see what it looks like here. Here, 
All right, again, I have never done this before, so this is what it's looking like all mixed up. It seems very watery, um, but it also seems very white too, so I mean, let's just see how it goes. I guess we can always make it whiter as we go. All right, so I'm actually liking how it's looking. I'm noticing that like when you first dip the brush, it's super white and then it kind of tapers out as you're painting. I notice that probably every time I dip the brush, I'm probably painting five to seven bricks just with one dip and kind of going across. And I like how it kind of fades. It's when I'll, I'll show you up close here in a minute, but I like how you know different bricks are different levels of white. Like some are really white, some you can still see a little bit of the red. And I kind of like that variance. Again, it kind of makes it look a little more authentic, I think. Um, uh, you know, a lot of that is preference, but I think it's looking pretty good. So a couple things that I did notice as I was painting that I think are worth mentioning in case you're trying to do something like this at home. When I'm painting, obviously, maybe it's not obvious, I didn't really think about it, but it does seem obvious, is that when you mix paint and water, the paint is super runny. Obviously, I had, again, like probably one-third paint, two-thirds water, and it's very runny, so it's always good to start at the top and work your way down because it's naturally just gonna wanna drip, drip, drip down. down. And I notice as it starts to dry, those drip marks are noticeable. So you always kind of want to be working down and then kind of always going back and kind of brushing your your walls wherever you see the drip marks. Second thing that I think is super important and I got lucky. This um, the first this is what I filled up and it's probably about down down to about here. It was probably up here. So I, I mean I used a good bit of it. But one thing that's worth noting is since I'm just kind of dumping paint and water in there and I didn't really measure, I just kind of eyeballed it. You definitely wanna make sure that you mix enough, if you're gonna do it like this, mix enough to where it's gonna cover your whole surface because you don't wanna run out halfway through and then make another mixture and then have the levels slightly off. I think I ultimately just need to kinda of get everything set back up, set cameras and lights up and see if I like this any better. So let's do that. Yeah, so this is a close up after it's dried of one third paint, two thirds water mixture and I like it at a distance but when I'm up close, I still think I see too much of the red, so I think I'm gonna add another coat. And then this is a part where I went back through and did about a 50-50 coat. So what you're seeing right now, had that first coat of one-third paint, two-thirds water, and then I went back over with a 50-50 mixture, and that's what it looks like, both coats in dry. So yeah, I think it's coming together pretty well. Still need to tweak the lighting and everything in here and put some other things back, but I'm ultimately happy with how it turned out. Like I said from the last clip, I ended up putting another layer of whitewash on the wall because I still thought I could see just a little bit too much of that red coming through and I wanted to make sure we almost got rid of all of it. So what you're looking at behind me, the finished product is one coat of one third paint, two thirds water, and then a second coat of half paint, half water. And I think it came out looking really well. I'm really happy with it and uh, hopefully this video informed you, helped you, and uh, thanks so much for watching. See you later.